Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori, and I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including these episodes of Consciousness Unleashed. And today we're talking about um, the new year and the idea of uh, becoming a new version of yourself, like reinventing yourself. So that's the theme for today's episode. And New Year's is just around the corner, 2023, pretty exciting. Uh, 2022 was a very interesting year. How was it for you, Bonnie? <laughs> sorry, sorry. It was, it was a very intense year, like serious intense, okay? But what's cool is it's like I can feel my own you know, my own mastery, which is awesome. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to teach stuff, you better be able to walk your talk. So that's been happening. And on some level I get to experience, whoa, wow. Hey, I'm really more aware, more awake. Don't take things personal. And yeah, the sky is falling and all is well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm hoping everybody listening to this will get some of that uh, <laughs> mastery. Right. So um, in the new year, a lot of people, they do like resolutions. Mm -hmm. And so my first question is, <laughs> is around the idea of um, how do we actually create the change necessary? Because a lot of people, they, they do like resolutions to maybe go to the gym or change their diet. And mm -hmm. that's all really action and behavior oriented type mm -hmm. of level of change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question is like, what level of the self do we actually have to change in order to have that, those intentions um, actually be sustainable? Mm -hmm. To actually manifest your, your. Intent. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So ba here's the thing. Bottom line is this. There's always a reason why you don't follow through. There could be self-sabotage. There could be self-undermining. There could be beliefs in your sub. Remember, this is all in your subconscious. It isn't in your conscious mind. So your subconscious mind is going to be what's sabotaging you. And it's going to have to do with misperceptions of reality, conclusions, things like beliefs that, they're, that you're bad, that you're a sinner, that you deserve to be punished, that you don't deserve other pieces that contribute to this is also feeling that you're not loved, you're not enough, you don't belong, you're not wanted. All of these are anchored into the subconscious. So you can have all these great intentions and maybe even start off really good with a bang, but eventually it all falls away because of what's in your subconscious, all right? So if you really want to make changes, you're going to have to figure out, uh, not figure out, but you're going to have to... Um, unravel some of the, uh, the subconscious beliefs. And that means the willingness to look at yourself, to pay attention to your reactions, to pay attention to your beliefs, your thoughts. Like when you think about going, let's just say the gym, because that's a big one. People, all, you know, they, they gain weight and then they want to lose it, you know, so they all sign up, not all, but many people will sign up and go to the gym. They start off all gung-ho, okay? But there could be other frequencies in there. Like there could be some, like I'm getting these downloads right now, but it could have to do with something like this. If you're a female and you've had some kind of sexual abuse and you've, you've padding your body to protect yourself, you certainly aren't going to go to the gym and follow through because you're, you don't feel safe in your body. So the thing is, is you want to find out what is in the subconscious. What are your beliefs in here? So if someone says to you, oh, wow, you look beautiful today and, and you look stunning and your body goes, eh, you know, you, you, you deflect it. That means you can't receive. Okay. So there, there's all kinds of different things that are occurring in a person's life that will give them the, the understanding of what are, what am I really capable of? Or what, what can I really receive? What can I really do for myself? How can I really honor myself? But, but we pay attention to our reactions. We pay attention to what happens in our own body, okay? The body's always talking to us, always. It'll, you know, we'll get angst in there, we'll get grabs, we'll get charges, zings of energy. Anytime we have any of these experiences, there's a red flag that there's something in us that we don't know what that is. But that something that we don't know what it is, is running our lives and sabotaging all of our good commitments to, you know, to help, help healthier body, 
uh, getting in shape, all those different things that we actually want, but we don't actually do because of these un unconscious woundings, these unconscious beliefs. So ultimately, there's no magic wand. There's no you know pill to take. Um, you know, I've been looking my entire life, didn't find one yet, and I've been you know seek seeking. It's not going to happen. So it's really about us, and we we are the only we are the chosen one. We are the chosen one for us. We are the ones who have to make the choice, the decision that, okay, I want to know, I want to face myself, I want to unravel, I want to be free, I want to be liberated, I want to be happy, I want to be healthy. All right, that means I have to face myself and go in and start unraveling and discovering where I'm not. And again, that really does mean pay attention to your life. Your, like I said, your body's talking to you when you have a reaction that's telling you there's a wound in here. You have a zing, a charge, you have a belief, you have these thoughts running through you. Ah, there's an unconscious wounding inside. So, you know, there's no way to get around things. There's no jumping over or, or hiding or rising above. We got wounding, you got to face it. That's the bottom line. Okay, so you want to change your life, look inside, change what's inside and everything outside will change naturally and organically. So I know you just talked about change right now, but a lot of people, one of the things might be the biggest block for people is like actually fearing change itself, mm -hmm. right? Do you find that that might be one of the biggest blocks for people to just create any change in their life, yeah, even yeah, the yeah. good ones? So right. you, do you talk about the fear of change? Yes, because what happens is whatever's familiar, whatever you grew up with, okay, you know, we got all the, the family, familiar family kind of stuff. So even though your mind is saying, I don't want to be like my father, my mother, father, I don't want to have that same kind of experience. No, no, no. What happens is, is it's in you, you live in your family. So whatever your family nomad was, whatever you were living, all the intensities or the dysfunctions or the you know, the wounding and all of the, the energy frequencies that you were living in, that's familiar to you. You're going to recreate it. You can't not recreate it. And the fact that you were in your mother's womb, you're taking on mom's energy. So unless you clear that energy out, you're going to be just like your mother. Okay. So what's familiar, even though we may not like it, it has that familiar, it is family. Therefore, we're not going to change that. The thought of changing something that is safe and familiar, even though it could be traumatic, even though it could be abusive, even though it could be traumatizing, there's a fear of change because it means letting go of what you are familiar with, what feels like family, what feels like home. A lot of people can't handle change. It means the unknown. It means stepping into something that is unfamiliar and in that unfamiliar it can feel dangerous it can feel scary it can feel like you know we're going to get lost we're going to go crazy it can feel like uh the, the energy that that we experience can be really intense and we feel a lot of fear around it okay so again everything still comes back to the bottom line you want to change your life you got to change what's in your subconscious. And that means the subconscious woundings. So the fear of change, I mean, lot, some people will hang on for dear life rather than let go, you know, and that the unknown means letting go into a river that you don't know where it's taking you. Okay. You don't know what's up. You don't know where you're going to land. You don't know what's going to, are there boulders? Are there rapids? What's going to happen? You know, it's like, you don't know. So that fear of the unknown can be stronger <laughs> than your than your desire to heal, okay? Because fear, when fear grabs, it takes over everything and we get paralyzed and we get tripped up and we can't move forward and we, we get locked and frozen in place. And, you know, it's like the very brave ones are the ones that are looking inside and getting help, healing work done and, and unraveling their subconscious. So again, fear is terrifying, especially if you've got, you know, intense uh, family family dynamics that are anchored into your subconscious that you're going to continually recreate until you do the unraveling, until you do heal what's in your subconscious. But fear, like anything, you know, it's an emotion, it's a frequency. And, you know, it's like, what do we want? Do we want to be happy? I think that's the big question, Cynthia, that people need to be asking. Do I want to be happy? 
everybody wants to be happy. I promise you, everybody. I don't care if you're the evilest of evil or the darkest of dark or the lightest of light. Everybody wants to be happy. So when you say, when you start acknowledging, yes, I do want to be happy, and you understand that what that really means, there's again, there's no magic wand that someone's going to wave over you. There's no pill you're going to take that's going to wake you up. It means facing yourself. Okay. You've already lived it. You lived through it. Now it's just facing all the emotions, the traumas, and the things that anchored in that keep you stuck and frozen in these ways of being that are familiar family. Again, do I want to be happy? That means I need to take action. Am I willing to do that? Okay, sit with that. And eventually you will be willing because enough suffering <laughs> makes anybody willing to do something different than they haven't done before. I know some people, um, when they think of changing, um, they a lot of times, a lot of people have this idea that they're just a certain way. Like they can't change because oh, yeah. they are, that's yeah. just who they are. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm just someone who always likes this or I'm someone who always, uh, people always treat me this way. That's just how it is. That's how but, it is. Right. That's how I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, for yeah. people who are really stuck in that, what kind of advice or what what would you tell them that would help them? I would ask them to ask themselves some questions like, is that really true? How do you know that's really true? That that's how you, who, who you are or how you are, okay? Again, people's behaviors and your actions are coming from your subconscious. There's nobody on the planet that isn't wounded in some way, that hasn't been had some kind of damage, emotional damage, emotional wounding, some things, some traumatic experience that hasn't in some way closed you down. Everyone is the walking wounded, okay? So again, when you have these misperceptions, like this is the way it is, this is how I've always been, this is the way it's always going to be, this is who, who I am, this is me, I'd ask you to ask the question, is this really the truth? Is this really true? Does it feel good to have these feelings and beliefs, to feel that you are this way or that, <clears throat> that things happen to you like this? How does that feel? Okay, it's always, it's always about how does it make you feel? If it doesn't bring you joy and happiness, then obviously it doesn't serve you. It's not serving your, your well-being and your joy. So again, when you have, again, these beliefs, because that's how they are, they're beliefs, and they get anchored in because of the wounding. Remember, your subconscious is going to draw to you and, and extract people's behaviors towards you based on your wounding, on your subconscious. So realistically, do a little research, do some exploring about the subconscious mind and how it literally dictates your whole world. You're going to discover that your behaviors are coming from a, a misperception from a wounded place, not from a place of this is who I am. Okay. So again, you're just going to be looking and asking some deeper questions. Who, who would I be if I wasn't this, if I didn't have this belief? Or if I didn't experience these kinds of behaviors from other people or people doing things and reacting to me in certain ways, who am I absent all of that? And who am I absent my wounding and my misperception? So again, you know, people want to believe that, okay, this is the way it is. This is how life is. This is the way I am. I'm never going to change because it's who I am. Again, is that really the truth? Are you really enjoying this particular behavior or thought or, or belief? You know, so again, it's like questioning oneself, asking oneself, because anybody else asking, it isn't going to work. You're going to go into deflecting, you know, you're going to go into fighting, you're going to go into rejecting. It's not, it doesn't work that way. It has to come from you, it has to come from me, my own exploration, my desire to know myself to understand more of my own behaviors, why I do what I do, why I think how I think. It all has to come from me, a curiosity of what's really going on for me. What am I really about? What do I really like? And that's another thing. You know, most people don't know what they really like. So I'm going to just ask everybody, encourage you, start writing down, what do you really like? What do you really want? And watch how challenged you are, okay? But do it anyway, keep pushing forward and then start finding out what do you really like? What do you love? What do you enjoy? That's also going to help you to start facing and realizing, oh, that kind of be that, that what I thought was me, that's never going to change. Hmm. I'm not actually liking that. I'm not really enjoying that. I'm not really enjoying how 
you know, maybe people pick on me or find fault with me or whatever, you know, whatever these things are that we have a belief around, start, you know, making your own notes and start talking about to yourself about, hey, this is what I really like. This is what I want. This is how I want my life to be. And it's not this way. What do I need to do to take action to change my life? Because I absolutely create my reality 100%. Anchor that one in. Own that one. And then see what you think about what's happening, who you think you are in your life and in your world. Well, you were talking just now. Something came to mind that I was, I'm trying to hold back laughter. because. <laughs> I know in my life where <laughs> oh, I have experiences where, like, let's say I liked a certain type of music for mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah. And then I revisit that. Like this year, actually, um, I revisited some like bands I used to like. And I, I, th- <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, this is horrible. <laughs> why, did I, why do I like this? Or why did I like this? Mm-hmm. And I actually felt grief. Like, like part of me felt so attached to like those bands or who I was. And Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of that has to do with like just feeling attached to something that and and identifying in a way it was kind of like part of my identity. Well, yeah. And yeah, go ahead. And it was a part of your life. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a part of your life where you felt a certain way and there that grieving is like, it's, it's that letting go of an old part of, or an old belief or an old way of being, you know, old, old, the old you. Okay. So yeah, you keep moving forward as everyone does. And when we bring back the past, sometimes it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, sometimes we like it and we go, Oh yeah, I remember that crack up and laugh. Other times it's like, Oh yeah, there's a sadness because there was something powerful and potent in that time of your life. And you were experiencing things in a way that maybe that like your music, you loved it, you had a joy, and now you've outgrown it. And yet that part of you doesn't exist like you once did. So you're changing and shifting as everyone is. And the past is, you know, it's getting further and further behind and looking back is okay, but we we don't really want to go backwards. We want to keep moving forward. But yeah, it can be very sad. It can feel like, you know, a lot of um, heartache or even even just uh, understanding oneself better and seeing where you were back then as opposed to where you are now. And I'd be, uh, probably be pretty clear, pretty good in to say that no one wants to really go backwards. I mean, you know, we don't really want to go backwards, even though I've, I have had that in my world where I thought, I took the red pill. I, I don't, I want to forget. I want to take the blue pill now. Okay. I don't No more, no more, no more waking up. I'm done, you know, because it gets so intense, but still who really wants to go back to where you really were? We don't, we want to keep moving forward. We want to keep waking up. We want to keep evolving. Yeah. And I noticed that now when I look back at some other things or things that I want to currently change, it becomes much easier to just let it go. It's like kind of once I experienced that, shift within myself and kind of letting my old self go mm-hmm. it's easier for me to let other old selves go <laughs> and, and reinvent yeah. myself every like i'm open to reinventing myself as much as i can every day and i think that's yeah. part of the journey of life yes yes, right? yes yes waking up expanding it's like who wants to live in a box where this is your whole life you know we want to come out of that box we want to experience it that's what we're here you know we're here to experience this is an, an experience and you can't get this when you're in a you know, when we're in consciousness, when we're not in physical form, we don't get all the, the things that we get here. You know, then you do, there's nothing tangible. You don't get to eat things, smell things and touch things and live an experience in this Maya. That's like an incredibly amazing planet, you know, to, to discover. But, um, you know, it's, it's mostly all that emotional stuff that whacks people. But basically being here is an incredible experience. So, yeah, we want to be here, experience it fully. You can't do that when we're holding back and afraid and, you know, the walking wounded. It's like we got to wake, open up, open that heart, let the wounding go, let the past go, be here, be here now. And what's really cool, Cindy, I just got this. The new paradigm is also helping and assisting all of humanity to let things go much easier than we've ever been able to do before. That part is awesome. Yeah. So more light shining shines on the darkness, the darkness gets exposed, it dissolves, dissipates, leaves, 
So, you know, the healing work that we're doing now is so much faster than it was when I first started doing the healing work back, you know, 36 years ago. So we've evolved quite a bit. The planets evolved, the energy frequencies, the new paradigm, the new light, the new world, new earth, everything's accelerating. So we got help, you know, so if we get on that journey, step onto our spiritual path of awakening, things are going to happen so much faster than they did even a year ago, two years ago. It's just accelerated, which is awesome. So I have a question about like the energy of a year, like, for example, 2023, uh, as opposed to 2022, is there really an actual like specific vibrational frequency of each year that maybe like supports a certain way of being or certain changes that you want? Like, I know some people, they do numerology yeah. and they may be actually, you know, a lot of times they'll um, add up the numbers for the year and that will represent something and that actually kind of um, helps mm -hmm. support a certain way. Is mm -hmm. this true that the years actually have a particular frequency to them? They do. Yes. Okay. Just think about when you think about all the planets and how we're just think about the moon, how the oceans are affected high tides by the moon. Okay. So the planets are different and align differently every year. And all of the planets are affecting all of humanity. So it isn't just the moon. It's like, you know, like Venus and Mars and Neptune, all these different planets and all the different stars, and all the th different things that are shifting and changing and aligning differently. All of those frequencies affect the earth itself. So every year is specifically different to its own year to its own self okay so this last year 20 well the year we're still in 2022 the a lot of you know a lot of chaotic frequencies a lot of different alignments things that you don't see aligning very often were happening and and um, the energy frequencies of the earth are definitely impacted and now uh, and so is humanity so every year is unique and different that's why it's kind of cool to get a sense of what's what's coming for you know what are we looking at for the coming year what's going to be presenting for the coming year and then we can look back at this past year and if we look at some of the you know the astrology and all the the aligning of planets and how they all did things the Merc mercury retrogrades all the different things that are happening and we can see clearly oh yeah you know that was that the intensity when that got when mercury did this and that did that it's like whoa things got really really intense you can see it okay so it's kind of cool to have that kind of awareness or at least exploration of, oh, what is it? What's coming? Because when we know, like, for example, Mercury retrogrades, that can be really whack a lot of people. Not everyone, but a lot of people get pretty whack. You know, when you know it's coming, you kind of, you don't buy things. You, you know, you don't buy airline tickets or whatever. You know what I mean? You just kind of know that, oh, things kind of get messed up. So let's just leave it. Just leave it till this we get out of that. So, yes, having... um Every year is different and every year can be new and exciting and keep that heart open no matter what, because the bottom line for all of it is our liberation, period, bottom line, that's it. So whatever's happening globally, planetarily, whatever's happening yearly is all for us, all for us to wake up. So is there really like a energetic push in January to make change? Is that something that's real, like a real thing energetically? <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, come, well, okay. There's a, there's a lot of different factors involved. Okay. We also have what we call the collective consciousness. I think most people are pretty familiar with that. That is the, the state of consciousness of all of humanity uh, collectively, and we all co-create together. So not only are our planets and things happen in them for the earth, but we also have beliefs. We have like the, the beginning of a year, everyone's got this belief, not everyone, but most many people, new year, new beginnings, start all over, start fresh. Okay. If you got a collective consciousness, we will all be impacted by that collective consciousness. Okay. So together we are creating and co-creating a push for change, a push for lightening up, a push for healthier bodies, a health for a push for healthier consciousness and awareness, all of that. And then, of course, the collective consciousness wanes come, you know, now now we come into February. Now we go into that, you know, different different months. So the collective consciousness is affected differently by the month. Like, for example, 
February has that Valentine, which is a, you know, a lot of that. We're talking a lot of people, okay? Collective consciousness with Valentine's. That's where our energy focuses. And then people go into, oh, I don't have a Valentine. I don't have love. Or I'm in love. Or I love, you know, whatever. But it's again that we're affected by the collective consciousness as well. So that big push in the beginning of new beginnings, I can see the energy of it, you know. And then it shifts, it starts waning, shifting and changing. Then we go into another month. Then we go into March. You know what I mean? It just, and it keeps on going. And then we, the collective keeps on changing, shifting along with the year. It'd be, depending on what holiday it is or what big day, you know, what is, the, what is happening this month for our holidays and our belief systems? So we are affected by all of that stuff. Great. I'm excited to hear your energy updates later that you'll be recording later. Yeah, um, on yeah. YouTube. So if you yeah. any of you are listening on Apple or Spotify or any other podcast platforms and you're interested in Bonnie's energy updates, go find us on YouTube, Spiritual Acceleration, type that in or Bonnie Sertori and you'll find the channel and you'll see the energy updates she'll do for 2023 as well as all the months uh, moving forward. So just want to put that out there, Bonnie. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So is it, are there any final words you want to say about uh, like maybe the new year or uh, becoming a new version of you? So people, no matter what, no matter what, everything is about you. Okay. Everything, your world, your life, everything is about you. You dictate your reality 100%. And the more we keep our heart open, the more we intend to love, no matter what, no matter if someone's you know, hurts our feelings or judges us or steals from us or, you know, does some kind of hurting of us, no matter what, underneath everything is love. So when we think about our parents, okay, think about your parents. There was a time, if you're not, if you're not feeling love for them right now, I promise you, it is still there. That love is there. Okay. So what I'm saying is, no matter what's happening, if we can still maintain the feeling and, and that sensation of feeling our, that love within, then we'll be able to ride through the most intense experiences, the crises, the, the losses, the abandons, all of these intense experiences that we have as humans. Something begins to shift and change when we just keep open, keep the heart open and keep feeling love no matter what. And I would just encourage everybody you know, go into the holiday season, go into the next year, go into your life with the intention of keeping your heart open, no matter what. Shift will happen in a good way. Thank you so much, Bonnie, again, for joining me. Well, it's your podcast. I'm joining you. <laughs> We're doing it together. Cindy. Okay. Doing, yeah. I need you. You need me. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of Consciousness Unleashed. Once again, you can find all of Bonnie's work at spiritualacceleration.com. And um, share this, like this. If you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe. And you'll, you'll have, uh, there'll be a lot more content coming up. Um, on the YouTube channel, as well as, of course, these uh, episodes will be continuing. Um, we'll try to do, I, I'd say, two uh, a month. That's what we've been doing so far. Does that sound good, Bonnie? Is that a good amount? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, okay great. Well, I, once again, thank you, everybody, for listening. Happy New Year. I hope you reinvent yourself in a positive way, and I'll see you next time. All right.